God Almighty created all of the stars, the sun and the moon and the stars with an understanding of our very unique perspective of that. And I'm so grateful for that. Well, the first reason why God said that he was created the sun and the moon and the stars with our perspective in mind was for signs. <laughs> it was not the second or the third or the fourth or the fifth or the sixth or the 25th reason why God Almighty created the sun and the moon and the stars. But actually the first reason God Almighty placed the stars in the heavens with our perspective in mind was for prophetic messages. A sign is a prophetic message. The second reason was for seasons. <laughs> now, me being from Johnson County, Texas, one of the things that I think of, I think of a season as, you know, well, it's fall time or it's winter time or it's spring or it's, you know, summertime. And, 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 and there is a layer of revelation that according to the clock and the calendar of the heavens, we know when the winter solstice is and we know when the summer solstice is, but that's not actually the Hebrew word. The Hebrew word here is actually moedim. And Moedim is, an, is a prophetic appointment. That means at this specific time, I'm going to talk to you now about this. An appointed time for a prophetic message to come to us, signs and seasons. What you need to understand about the heavens is that it is a calendar and it is a clock. And signs and seasons tell us that the heavens are a supernatural calendar and days and years tell us that the heavens are a natural calendar. How am I doing so far, guys? Okay, Psalms chapter 19, verses one through three. It says, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. There's a word firmament again. The heavens declare the glory of God and how we perceive it and view it gives us the details, the handiwork. Day in the day utter speech and night in the night shows knowledge and there is no speech. Everybody say speech, language, or voice where it's not heard. Three different ways that God Almighty communicates his word right here is described as speech, language, and voice. Those are not the same thing. Those are three completely different ways or means of delivery of the word of God. But first he describes, before he describes speeches and languages and voices, he also describes that God Almighty speaks something through the daytime and God Almighty speaks through the nighttime. Let's be sure that we do not miss this. Day and the day utter speech. Daytime is for hearing God speak. Night and a night is for showing knowledge. Nighttime is for thanking God thoughts. Daytime is about becoming aware of something. Nighttime is about being, being dedicated to contemplating it. Amen. I want you guys, guys, one of the main reasons that God created the sun and the moon and the stars and positioned them from our perspective and mind was literally for prophetic signs to tell us when we were entering into a new prophetic season, right? For signs and for seasons, and also, too, for us to be able to recognize, okay, dude, we're entering into this, and then at nighttime for us to go, now, God, give me the details. The details come at nighttime. The declaration comes in daytime. You guys still tracking with me? Luke chapter 21, verse 25 and 28, Jesus Christ himself who answers all the hate mail that I get saying that this is the devil and it's not God. And the reason why they think is the devil is because they are not kingdom people. They are Christians, but they are not kingdom people. You're supposed to seek first the kingdom. What is the kingdom? It's where the king has dominion. I promise you the king has dominion over the heavens. It does not belong to the witches. It does not belong to warlocks. It does not belong to the new agers. It doesn't belong to the Babylonians or the Medes or the Persians or the Egyptians or the Greeks or the Romans. It does not belong to the Brits or the Americans. How the heavens declare the glory of God belongs to God Almighty's people so that we can look up knowing that our redemption is drawing near. Amen. Well, today, friends, we're talking about eclipses because tonight there is a very, very, very prophetic event that happens in the heavens on this night. One of the ways that God Almighty speaks, there's never been a time when God has spoken so much and declared such great things in the heavens as right now, and today is no exception. There's actually a tremendous prophetic event that is happening in the heavens here tonight. And before I even tell you what the eclipse is actually saying, you need to know that the eclipse itself that is happening is proof that Jesus Christ has designed it for God's people. Why? Because the eclipses do not happen anywhere else in the, anywhere else in the universe. 
Like, how do you know that? I don't know that for sure because I haven't been everywhere else in the universe. But I've been to Itasca, Texas, and they happen. I'll tell you that. I've been to the Alvarado reunion. I've been around. No, I haven't been all over the universe, but I can tell you this. Eclipses happen because the universe was built in such a way that it was placed there with our perspective in mind, exactly as the Bible declares. This is how an eclipse works. The sun is exactly 400 times bigger than the moon is. But it is also exactly 400 times further away from us than the moon is from us. Meaning they are both exactly the same size, only from our perspective. So that when the two unite, they become one, only for people who are standing on terra firma. Not for any other planet, not for any other place. Everything in the heavens are positioned in the sky because God is trusting us to look up and to hear the message and to think the thoughts. He's trusting us with that. And you can be a part of some limp-wristed Christianity that says, well, that's too scary for me. Pastor Troy, we don't want to be a part of any of that because witches and devils have got a hold of that and they've done terrible things with it. Well, listen, you need to hear me say this. God made this for you. It's beautiful. It's supposed to be a part of your everyday life. I'm sorry, Pastor Troy, I can't because bad people have done things with it. You don't say that about sex. Oh, don't even bring your hypocrisy and your stupidity to me. That thought has never entered in your mind. I better not have an awesome sexual life because somebody else has done something bad with it. So God speaks through both lunar and solar eclipses. Man, that's going to get me some hate mail. I got a skunk hat for them. I don't know if y'all know what that is, but you're going you're gonna to be seeing it. So God speaks through both, both lunar and solar eclipses. Now, friends, when God speaks through the sun, he's speaking one thing. And when God speaks through the moon, he's speaking another thing. And when God is speaking through the sun, he's addressing one group of people. And when God speaks through the moon, he's addressing another group of people. A good indication of that all the way through the Bible is like, okay, like in the book of Revelation, it says, and I saw a woman clothed in the sun and her feet were upon the moon. Okay, so what are we talking about? We're talking about the natural nation of Israel, a woman clothed in the sun. We're talking about a real nation, a real people on a very real land that is called Israel. But her feet are upon the moon, which means the body of Christ is now within Israel. Okay, so if, if, if you understand that when God speaks, what, okay, so the, so, so the sun is always seen as masculine, the moon is always seen as feminine. The Bible talks about that the sun goes forth in uh, Psalms 19 as a bridegroom coming out of his bedchamber, right? And then, but then again, guys, the, the moon has a 28-day cycle. Women have a 28-day cycle. And so the moon is glorious, and man, we love the light of the moon, right? By the light of the silvery moon. Lucille Ball was saying that. So, her and Wilma got up there and sang it, and Fred was singing in the background. So, so, I say that to say this that what's real is while the moon is bright, it actually has no light. The glory of the moon is the sun. Because the moon merely reflects the light of the sun. Now you and I, as the body of Christ, or the bride, which is what the moon is supposed to represent to us, man, you know what? The Bible says that uh, we have varying degrees of brightness. But we don't have really any light of our own. Oh, we're holy, but our holiness is his holiness. Our righteousness is his righteousness. Our glory is his glory, and we merely reflect it. We are the bride. We are the bride. So when God speaks through an event of the sun or when God speaks through a solar calendar is in the Gregorian calendar, which is 